Where we stop AC1 is basically where we start AC2. Not basically, it is. So the last frame of AC1 will be the first one of AC2. So you're still in Absurgo with uh, Desmond, Desmond Miles, you know, the, the character in the present who's going through experiment with this uh, Animus machine, machine that let him uh, relive a life of his ancestor. So that, that's still in AC2. We're going further with it. This time around, Desmond will do a bit more than only walking around and finding clues. And, uh, but we're introducing a brand new character in, for the past, for the, the, the ancestor part of the game, which is like 95% of the game. And this time it's all about Ezio, Ezio Auditore da Firenze, which is an Italian name because we're going in Italy, the Italian Renaissance, that's our setting for the second game. The narrative part of Assassin's Creed 2 is all about the story of Ezio. And Ezio is a, is a young noble Florentine at the beginning of the game and something will happen to him and he will learn to become an assassin. Uh, and that was really important for me that we tell the story of someone who's not a ma master assassin at first so we could like do the structure of the game about learning so player would be as good as this character at the end of the game uh, the Italian Renaissance is all about famous people Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, the Medici uh, to name a few so for us it was the perfect setting for an Assassin's Creed game <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci in Assassin's Creed 2 is one of the most important characters for two reasons. He's the best friend of the main character Ezio, so you, you'll be there in the narrative part. And in the game structure, is your cue, is the guy who's giving all the gadgets, he's helping you out, he's building up upgrades for your weapons, for example. One of the most famous idea of Leonardo da Vinci was a flying machine. And we said, what if, what if he actually did it? And uh, so it's a big part of the game to be able to fly over Venice. And uh, so it, it is in the E3 demo and it's actually a mission in the game. What's changed in the mission structure from AC1 is basically everything. So we, <laughs> we took, you know, uh, the liberty of putting everything aside from the investigation part of AC1 in a mission. So that's gone. We kept the assassination part. But the investigation, instead of having uh, being a structure before going in an assassination, is all the rest of the mission, basically. We can start a mission by having an escort mission. So you, a character, a mission giver, will say, escort me to this place. And arriving there, you have a brawl mission that appears, and then suddenly you have to fight your, your, way, your way out. And then you finish it with an escape mission. And that creates one unique mission, but we have also those mission types that we can reuse everywhere in the game. So it's, it's no more about nine guys to kill and you do your investigation and then your assassination and then you get back, get back to the base. It's really much more this open-ended world in which there's people asking you to go in missions and you go and meet them and say, okay, right, I'm your man and you do it. The fight is a bit different, the combat part of the game is different from AC1. What I asked the team is that instead of having this warrior type of character, let's try to do an assassin, right? So he's not always with a weapon in his hand, so he's like bare end most of the time and he can disarm his enemy and use their weapons against them. So that creates a different you know, vibration to the, to the combat. Uh, and we're also introducing new weapon types. So we have two-ended like uh, uh, weapon, like axes or, or big mace, you know. Uh, we also work really hard on uh, having more assassination type and, and more way of assassinating, making it easier and more accessible somehow. In, in AC1, it was with your hidden blade from the back if you weren't noticed. This time around, you can do it while climbing, from sitting on a bench, from a bale of hay. You also have this, you know, cool feature that I a bit at first imposed to the team, but now I'm really happy, is that it's Assassin's Creed 2, so we put two hidden blades. You know, it's like, it's, it seems obvious, but it's really, really, really awesome when you actually use them. So Assassin's Creed 2 will be out this holiday 2009 uh, on PS3, 360, and PC.